You know, it's just, I mean, it's... it's Dutch Mantel, don't forget, it, we didn't we didn't have that last week. Dutch Mantel, yeah, it was released, and uh, Samuel Vega, Vega yeah. as well, um, who's an agent for the company. You know, I mean, a lot of people are, are just, I mean, Dixie is, is pissed. Yeah, but Mantel, Mantel was Jeff, Jer- Jeff Jarrett's, like, right-hand man, wasn't he? So that's that's a big one. And Dixie, I mean, Dixie's just thrown a fit, you know what I mean? And this had been out, this had been out within the I mean, people knew about it, but nobody came. He mentioned it on Stern, like you said, yeah. I mean, it's been known for months. You know, I mean, mean, uh, and then it came out, and and she just lost it, you know what I mean, with major, major shakeups, which could be a good thing. You know, I know a lot of people shit all over the TNA booking as of late, but guys. Vince Russo's in charge now, ain't he? He's been in charge, yeah. Yeah, well, he's been uh, right there with Jarrett. Yeah, he's he's been there. But, I mean, he's he's the main main guy right now, and Mantell was the main guy as well, and he's he's kind of there as well. But, I mean, the booking is not – it's not horrible, guys. I mean, there are things – there are things on Monday Night Raw that are horrible, and there are things on TNA that are pretty bad as well, you know what I mean? Every show is going to have their ups and downs, but as far as – as far as overall booking is concerned, if you're an older fan, if you're somebody that's older and wants to see more mature storylines and, and more high-flying action, I mean, TNA is, is where you guys should be on a weekly basis. I'm not trying to – they don't pay me to say this, TNA is better or anything like that, but as far as, I mean, coming – You're just a uh, mark, me, That's what Well, well no, for me, for me, an older fan, it's just a, it's, it's more mature storylines. I know they've got their – they're gimmicky stuff as well, but it's just it's for I like the high flying action and I like more mature storylines and I get that when I watch Impact on a weekly. More day. mature storylines on Impact? More mature storylines. Doctor Stevie, that's, that's no better Dr. than Doctor Stevie Chan. Come on. And, and Cody Deaner. I didn't say the TNA was perfect. Come on, man. No, no putting words in my mouth. TNA is definitely, definitely not perfect. WWE has their. I never said the word perfect. Product. I didn't put any word in your mouth. What are you talking I know, about? I know. But it's just I don't know. As far as uh, if you were to ask my opinion, TNA over over WWE or Impact over. Over Raw, I would say impact over Raw. I, I hear SmackDown's like really good every week, but I'm never gonna see it to find out. But that, that's what I hear. Yeah, Friday's a rough day. Plus, I have uh, Friday night fights is usually on Friday night, so I can't. Uh, really? You know? <laughs> yeah. Friday night fights on Friday. You think Friday night fights on a Friday? You think? <laughs> wow. Are we ever gonna get to talk about UFC? We got seven minutes left. What are we doing? We got seven minutes, baby. Well, uh, let's do it. Michelle McCool injured over the uh, over the weekend. Imagine we'll see that. What they do. Yeah, we talked about that. Da 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 da. All right, one on one. You have one on one. Black Tech Mulligan has a stroke and a serious news thing. Uh, he's he's still recovering from that. He's apparently in pretty bad shape right now. Uh, Lillian Garcia, she'll be wrapping up business with WWE maybe this month. Although she put out a Twitter message recently saying she doesn't know exactly when her last show is on TV. So uh, right. it'll be her tenth anniversary at SummerSlam. She did note that though, so she's going out after ten years. I didn't realize she's been around that long. Jesus. It's been a uh, it's been a minute, man. She had uh, she was actually in Las Vegas at the MGM place where we were just a uh, nice. few months ago. But uh, yeah, so she's going to be wrapping things up here in the uh, here in the next few weeks. It looks like so. Who knows? We'll see what they what they do to replace her. I mean, they've got Justin Roberts, but he can't do the uh, the national anthem. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> who true. knows? Who knows? All right, UFC 101. We'll have, we'll they'll, have they'll have Jillian Hall do the uh, national anthem every week or something. There you go, um, something like that. <laughs> UFC 101, this, pay, this pay-per-view is pretty damn good. It's the first time uh, UFC's coming to Pennsylvania. They're going to go to Philadelphia at the Wachovia Center. So, And uh, they got they got two very big fights on this card. We mentioned them before, BJ Penn versus Kenny Florian. Uh, that'll be for the lightweight title. That's the first fight BJ Penn's had since we saw him uh, lose to George St. Pierre at a welterweight title fight. So... Uh, he's he's trying to get his name back, get his recognition back, get his status back, and he's taking on the um, toughest guy UFC has to offer at 155 right now. A lot of people are are giving Kenny Florian a lot bigger chance than I thought they would have. Like the poll on MMAnews.com is, I mean, BJ's winning pretty nicely, but there's a lot of votes for Florian. There's a lot of people, reporters I've seen picking Florian. I'm like, wow, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see him standing a chance. But I mean, there always is the issue of BJ Penn's cardio. You know, if he doesn't come in and get rid of you real quick, if he gets into the third round, especially the fourth or fifth round, then it's Florian has the advantage because Penn is, is pretty notorious for 
being a front runner. You know, he, he's good when he's you know when things are going his way. The second they stop going his way, you know, see the Matt Hughes fight, the second fight, see George St. Pierre, the second fight or the first fight, it's been known to happen. So I mean, it is possible that Florian could win, but I gotta go with BJ Penn by quick. I'll say TKO. I don't think he'll submit him. Cause Florian's Did you really see the video him. with uh, with Penn jumping out of the swimming pool? Where yeah, he, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that is nuts, man. And then wasn't there? Uh, there's some legit beef here with uh, Penn and Florian. Something about a text message, right? Ooh, I didn't. I don't think I've heard of this yet. It might be new. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Oh, was it an older story where 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 some, Florian said something to Penn in a text, and then Florian claimed it wasn't him that texted it or something? Exactly. Okay, exactly. I remember something about that, but I don't remember what it is. So yeah, just... I can't. Yeah, I don't remember the uh, the exact story, but there's something that's caused a lot of bad blood between. They used to be best friends or something, BJ and Florian. They and... like each other, yeah. But um, BJ Penn like Joe Stevens too. Joe Stevens too. They're really good friends. The guy that Kenny Florian just beat to get this fight, and uh, right. B, when BJ fought him, BJ had his blood squirting. I mean, squirting out of his face like a faucet. I mean, he, really? he didn't hold back none. So, and, and even uh, he told him, and uh, before the press conferences, he wasn't going to be nice to him. So Joe Stevenson, every time they would do a face-off for pictures, and even in the cage the night of the fight, Joe came up smiling, wants to shake his hand, and Penn got right in his face. <laughs> you know, Fuck you, put your hand away. We're about to fight. You know, I don't want to be a friend right now. But uh, BJ Penn by I say second round TKO stoppage. What do you got? Uh, I'd say BJ Penn. I don't. Uh, I don't want to pick the round. <laughs> you gotta pick. You gotta pick away. What are you talking? Oh, this ain't come wrestling. On, come this on. is not wrestling. You don't just pick the winner. You tell me how this dude's winning. <laughs> All right, I'll do. Uh, I'll do uh, BJ Penn tap. Uh, BJ Penn tap out in round two. Really? You think he'll submit him? Like a submission. Like Kenny a. Kenny Florian is a badass yeah. jujitsu guy. I mean, BJ Penn's better, but Florian is a bad mother. He's a bad dude. On no, I'm not face. convinced with this Florian. You know, I, mean, not, I, 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 no I was the same way. His whole career, I was like, I heard everybody talking about how good he was, and I'm like, what are you talking? He's a little skinny pencil neck geek, you know, tip of the cap to cast Cassie for the breast. Exactly. But, exactly. but he is. Mean, he, he's not. He's really not, man. If you come on that fight with Joe Stevenson. He killed him. You know, Diego Sanchez didn't go through Joe Stevenson like that, and Diego was killing people at welterweight, including yeah. Kenny Florian. But um, uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not sold. I'm not sold to the point where I think he can beat BJ Penn. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Because the last no, time he got a title even. shot, last time he got a title shot was against Sean Shirk when he was still champion, and he did better than I thought he would at the time. I, I remember thinking Sean Shirk would kill him at the time, and he opened Sean Shirk up, was catching him with knees, was catch, coming close to submissions, but he lost the decision. So I don't know. I don't see it happening at all. The, the other fight. This is our this is our co-main event, right? Because our other fight is. No, that's the main event. Main event. The, the co-main event okay. is Anderson Silva, who was the middleweight champion, 185 pounds, moving up in weight to 205 pounds to fight the former 205 pound champion Forrest Griffin in a non-title fight, three rounds. Here's who was it? I'm so bad with that memory. Was it Anderson and Rashad? Was it? Was that the Anderson, last one? Anderson, Anderson and um. Last and fight. um. Tallis Ladies, I believe. Where he did, where Anderson just kept kept putting him down, and then would get up and call him up, right? He, yeah, yeah, that was Tallis Ladies. I mean, yeah. that's what I that's what I remember about Anderson Silva. And before that last fight that he was in, I always thought, you know, Anderson Silva, this guy.